Yeah, so I'm working on a compound called Compound E. Compound E has two different moieties. Uh, one is uh, basically what we call the um, target moiety. That basically binds to something on the cell surface of gram-negative bacteria. And then that target moiety is basically hooked up to an FC portion of an antibody. So the whole idea is to bring uh, uh, the bug and phagocytes in close proximity so that actually the phagocyte can do its function and phagocytize the organism and kill it. So I um, don't know exactly how much the burden worldwide, but I think the CDC estimates that there are probably no less than 6,000 to 10,000 cases per year in the U.S., I believe. And, and um, you know, it's often lethal. So most of these um, organisms, as in Etobacter, are multi-drug resistant, or what we like to call them extensively drug resistant, meaning that they are resistant to all antibiotics with the exception of cholestin. And cholestin is a very old antibiotic um, and it's highly toxic. It has very um, toxic uh, effect on the kidneys. So it's nephrotoxic and um, it's definitely not the most, um, you know, it's not the ultimate treatment. Um, so the mortality rate with acinetobacter um, is approximately 50 to 60%. And there are no less than 70% of the isolates are categorized as multi-drug resistant. So it's, it's a major problem. So um, the, the, what we showed in our presentation today that compound A is extremely effective in treating um, murine um, um, pneumonia associated with acinetobacter. So uh, we have a model whereby we basically induce infection in neutropenic mice um, and it, that model is not um, um, immediately lethal. So uh, it allows us to actually give uh, compound A um, and treat for several days before we st start seeing mortality. So ultimately the placebo or the mice that are not treated, they succumb to death and we get 100% mortality with this model within approximately one week. So what we found is if you treat the mice with compound A starting three hours post-infection and continue for seven days, you actually have a very good protection on those mice. So we get anywhere between 50 to 80% protection based on what kind of regimen that you use and what kind of dose you are actually administering to the mice. So uh, we also understand that compound A uh, in addition to the fact that it brings in the phagocytes in close proximity to kill the organism, it really actually helps with uh, uh, what we call um, vascular leak because it, um, the, the target moiety basically goes after LPS, which is the endotoxin in, in gram negatives. So um, um, LPS usually binds the toll like receptor for and that induces vascular leak through a pathway that we actually uh, know it's related to um, downstream molecules called um, MID88 and ARNO. And that basically opens the endothelium. So when you block LPS from binding to toll like receptor 4, you actually uh, preserve the vascular integrity and you prevent the vascular leak. So what, what vascular leak does in gram-negative um, infections and in any infection, if there is basically consequences of sepsis, it floods the organs with um, you know, blood material and as a result, it shuts down the organ and ultimately causes death. So if you preserve the vascular integrity, you basically prevent this thing from happening. So LPS would still basically engage the inflammatory immune response and causes phagocytes, neutrophils, and macrophages to come and fight the infection, but you prevent the bad consequences of sepsis, which is basically the vascular leak. So these are the two things that the that, um, that target moiety uh, or compound A does. Um, so what's next is we're trying to see whether this effect, this protective effect goes beyond gram, you know, uh, acinetobacter. So it can go to other gram negatives. You know, there are many other important infections, Pseudomonas, uh, Klebsiella, 
uh, pneumonia. Both are categorized to be multi-drug resistant and priority pathogens. And also we would like to decipher the mechanism of protection a little bit more. So hypothetically speaking, this is how it should work, but we haven't proved it yet. So this is where we are and this is where we want to go. So we want to see whether it has a broad spectrum activity, but also at the same time we would like to know exactly how it's protecting.